Hello viewers, greetings to you and welcome to my channel as usual. Please let me know where you're watching from. Also subscribe if you have not subscribed to my channel, like and share the video. Now in my last uh, video, I showed you how to size a solar charge controller using the maximum uh, PV power, that is Pmax, divided by the VMP, that is the maximum power voltage, multiplied by 1.2 which is the safety factor. Now, this method or this formula is best suitable for a PWM uh, charge controller. PWM charge controller. Now, the PWM charge controller, when you are sizing the PWM charge controller, uh, the, your nominal battery bank voltage should match with the uh, nominal uh, voltage of your solar panel. So, if uh, your battery bank is 12 volts. It means uh, this is your charge controller. This is your charge controller and this is the battery bank. This is the solar panel. Now, the nominal uh, uh, battery bank voltage should correspond with your uh, the nominal voltage of your solar panel. So if the nominal battery bank voltage is 12 volts, the nominal voltage of your solar panels should also be 12 volts. If it is 24 volts, the nominal voltage of your solar panel should also be 24 volts. If the battery bank voltage, nominal battery bank voltage is 48 volts, then the nominal uh, uh, solar panel voltage should be 48 volts. That is multiplying, if it is uh, 48 volts, you multiply 24 volts by 2. If it is uh, 24 volts, you multiply tw uh, 12 volts by 2. That is connecting the solar panels in uh, series to give you either 24 volts then uh, or 48 volts. Why? Because for a PWM charge controller, you are looking at the VMP and the IMP of your solar panels. So this is what uh, will guide you in sizing the solar charge controller. This is P. W M. Now, uh, this formula, if you want to apply it uh, in sizing a an MPPT charge controller, uh, it won't give you a good result or uh, a better uh, charge controller size that will efficiently charge your battery bank. So, when sizing uh, a P um, an MPPT charge controller, sorry, when sizing an MPPT charge controller, you will use a different method. Reason being that. Uh, for the MPPT charge controller, the voltage window is very wide. The MPPT charge controller can take high voltage. That is, this is a solar panel. And this is the MPPT charge controller. And this is your battery bank. Now, the MPPT charge controller can receive, that is the input voltage from the solar panels can be very high. So the voltage uh, window is very wide. So it can receive a uh, high voltage. Then uh, the MPPT charge controller also have the ability to step down that voltage to charge your battery bank. So uh, the PWM charge controller does not have this uh, ability, does not have this uh, capability of receiving a uh, high voltage and stepping down the voltage to charge uh, you know, your battery bank. Because the MPPT charge controller, some of them, they are uh, maximum uh, VOC, that is from the solar panel. You can connect the solar panels in series to give you up to 145 volt uh, DC, to give you up to 170 volt DC, 200, 250, up to even 500 volt DC. And the charge controller will be able to step down that 500 volts, for example, to charge you know, your 24 volt battery bank or your 48 volt battery bank. But that is not possible with a PWM charge controller. If you connect high voltage, the input voltage of uh, the PWM charge controller, if the input voltage is very high and uh, you are using it to charge a, a battery bank, it won't be able to convert or step down that high voltage to charge your battery bank. So the excess voltage here will be waste. It will be converted to heat. So it, be, it will become a loss. But the MPPT controller will convert that SS voltage to more power to, you know, efficiently charge your battery bank. 
So I'm going to show you how to, you know, size an MPPT charge controller to correspond with uh, the charging of your battery bank, 12 volts, 24 volts, 48 volts, or any other battery bank you are using. All right, for the MPPT charge controller, what you are going to take into consideration is number one, your maximum PV power, which is Pmax, maximum solar power, your PV array power. That is, if you have, uh, like the example I use in uh, uh, our calculation when sizing a uh, solar charge controller, we use the total power of the solar panels, 440 watts, uh, four pieces. I give uh, We have 1,760 watts. So you are going to take into consideration the total wattage, PV wattage, PV array power of your solar panels. Then the second one is your battery bank, the size of the battery bank you want to charge. Is it a 12 volt, for, uh, 24 volt, or 48 volt uh, battery bank? Now, after taking the battery bank into consideration, you look at the charging voltage of the battery bank. So these are the different charging voltage of uh, the, our uh, different uh, uh, battery bank, 12, 24, and 48 volts. Okay. So for a 12 volt battery bank, if you want to use an MPPT charge controller to charge a 12 volt battery bank, the charging voltage is 14.4 volts. For 24 volt battery bank, the charging voltage is 28.8 volts. For 48 volt battery bank, the charging voltage is 57.6 volts. Now, if our total uh, PV array power is 1760 watts, what we are going to do is that we are going to divide uh, Pmax, that is the total uh, PV array power, divide by, you know, your, uh, uh, what's it called? Your charging voltage. Divide by your charging voltage. All right. The total power is 1,760 watts. For 12 volts uh, battery bank, it will be 1,760 watts divided by 14.4 volts, which is the charging voltage for a 12 volt battery bank, multiplied by 1.2, which is the safety factor. We are taking uh, losses and uh, other uh, <coughs> factors into consideration. So what we have is 147 amps, which is approximately 150 amps. Then for a 24 volts, if we have this total uh, uh, solar uh, PV array power of 1,760 watts, and we want to use it to charge a 24 volt battery bank, it will be 1,760 watts divided by 28.8 volts, multiplied by 1.2, our safety factor will give us 73.3 amps. But it's difficult for you to get uh, a charge controller of this uh, size. So you can go for the 80 amp, uh, 80 amps charge controller. You know, uh, the ones that we have common in our market, uh, Felicity, they are 80 amps uh, solar charge controller can handle 1,760 watts of uh, PV power. Then for 48 volts, if you want to use the same 1,760 watts to charge a 48 volt battery bank, it will be 1,760 divided by 57.6. This is the charging voltage for a 48 volt battery bank. Then multiply by 1.2, it will give us 37 amps. So approximately 40 to 45 amps charge controller will be able to charge this uh, uh, battery bank. So always take into consideration the maximum PV input power of that charge controller. Anytime you're picking an MPPT charge controller, look at the maximum uh, PV input power and the maximum PV, uh, PV input voltage. These two parameters will guide you uh, in uh, uh, properly uh, choosing the right size of MPPT charge controller in you know, order to charge your battery bank. Now, when you have an MPPT charge controller, it gives you that advantage. It gives you that, uh, 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 yes, the advantage of connecting your solar panels in series. Because for the MPPT, if you connect your solar panels in series, that is, the this is your solar panel. 
And this is our charge controller SCC, which is MPPT, MP, uh, PPT charge controller. Now, the advantage of uh, using an MPPT charge controller is that when you connect these solar panels in series, the voltage will increase. So you are having a lesser amount of current that you are sending to the charge controller. So the size of cable you are going to use between your solar panel and the charge controller will be, you know, will not be large. The cable size will be small as compared to, you know, uh, the PWM where you have to connect these solar panels in parallel. By connecting them in parallel, you are building the current. And if you have high current, it means you're going to use large cable and that will increase the overall cost of the system. So between your solar panels and the charge controller for an MPPT charge controller, it will give you the advantage of using a smaller cable while you're connecting the solar panels in series because the PV input voltage window of an MPPT charge controller is wide. So you can connect four, five solar panels. Like if you have 500 volts and uh, maybe your uh, the VOC of your solar panel, maybe the charge controller can receive up to 500 volts. And the VOC of your solar panel is maybe Let's take, for example, 40 volts. If you want to know the number of panels you can connect in series to send to this charge controller, you just divide 500 volts by 40 volts. This will cancel. So from here, you will know the number of solar panels you are going to connect in series to give you, you know, this uh, 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 500 volts that the solar charge controller requires. Now, between the charge controller, this is your charge controller, and your battery bank, now, the distance between here and here is short. So here, you are going to use larger cables. For example, if you are using a, uh, the charge controller is 80 amps, the distance will be short. So even when you are using large cables, you will discover that at times uh, the distance will not be that too long. So you are going to spend less a uh, lesser amount of money to buy the cable that you connect between your solar charge controller and the battery bank. But between the solar panel and the charge controller, the cable will be small. Between the charge controller and the battery bank, the cable will be big because the amount of current that is leaving this charge controller to the uh, battery bank uh, will be high. So you are going to use a larger cable size. Why? Because the current is high. So this is how to you know, properly size uh, or choose uh, an MPPT charge controller. The other calculation is suitable, like I told you, for a PWM charge controller. The reason why most times we are having issues uh, when charging our battery bank is because we are not looking at the charging parameters. That is the specifications of both the charge controller, you know, the solar panel and the battery bank. Mind you also that your batteries, they have their own charging parameters, maximum charging current and minimum uh, charging current. We have batteries that are rated C10, some C20. So all these things, you need to take them into consideration when sizing your solar power system so that everything will work out efficiently. Thank you for watching. If you want to join my online training class, please let me know uh, in the comment section and I'll send you the link. You can join my Telegram group, but it is not free because there you have, uh, we, you we, we interact, you ask questions, anytime you ask a question, uh, I'll be there by the grace of God to attend to the question. And we have our lectures, you know, every day. So I'll be starting the online class very soon and the re registration is ongoing. So if you're interested in learning all the steps uh, by steps you need in sizing a solar power system, you can, you know, join the training, the training class. So thank you for watching. Don't forget to let me know where you're watching from. If you have not subscribed, please do subscribe. Hit the subscribe button and also like and share the video. Thank you. See you in my next video.